payments. Everybody likes getting money. You know, when I ran a retail store in Silicon Valley, I remember having the, mic, the uh, Visa card uh, imprint. Well, the modern way ain't so different. Well, maybe it's a lot different. <laughs> and we're gonna talk to Stripe about how to take money and do things that are innovative and new with payments. Who are you? Hi, I'm uh, John Collison. I'm one of the co-founders of Stripe. Uh, before Stripe, I actually grew up in Ireland, and growing up, I always worked on uh, software and then startups. Uh, and Stripe was, I guess, the culmination of all that experience where we came to build. So there's a lot of new things that developers want to build payments into that require very low friction. Is that sort of what you're doing? Or? It's really exciting, right? Like, I think people at every uh, stage feel like they're living in the future. Like people in the 1950s probably felt like we're living, they were living in the future. But we certainly feel like we're living in the future right now. And uh, with devices getting what I feel is like closer to you, like mobile phones and you know, I'm sure the glasses and everything like this, uh, we can have much more lightweight experiences. So before any kind of online payment would be, I'm going to go online shopping now and put things in my cart uh, and you know, then check out. And it's this very formal process. Uh, now buying something means, uh, yeah, you open an app and tap on it to get an exec or use Postmates or use Lyft or one of these things. Yeah, the Apple Store app sort of does this. It lets you uh, buy something in the store that doesn't have a, a serial number, and then you just go and take it off the shelf and you leave. Exactly, and so what I think we're seeing you know, in general terms is a move away from more formalized buying experiences towards everything being customized towards the, uh, towards the individual experience. And so uh, you know, with uh, Postmates, you, you know, maybe order it online or in the app and then you're billed afterwards. You know, with uh, Uber, you can set the tip yep. in the app, this kind of stuff. So why do we need Stripe? Why can't we do this with PayPal or with a Visa account right. or a merchant account? Or So what we're building with Stripe is uh, payment technology for the web up. If you look at how most people do payments today or how, how it evolved, you have this, this whole legacy system of merchant accounts and gateways that ori originally before the web served brick and mortar businesses and then uh, you know they had the imprinters yep. uh, and then I had one of those in my store <laughs> right uh, and then you know you replaced those with gateways and then as you moved online you have these uh, very I guess kind of formal clunky checkout experiences and you know you see with a lot of stores um, you, you redirect the customer over to the store they check out there they or redirect them over to the payment experience they check out there they come back and it's a little bit like, you know, if I was to order coffee uh, and the barista says, that's great, just go down the street to the bank, put $3 in our bank account, come back and pick up your coffee. And, like, we've come to accept this totally weird, clunky experience online. And so with Stripe, we're giving people the infrastructure to build whatever payment experiences they want. They can, uh, you know, we give them all the basic primitives for storing payment credentials and using those payment credentials on a repeated basis. And then they build all these awesome, like, really customized experiences. Yeah. So, do you have to build all the infrastructure that PayPal did? I mean, you know, when you go to PayPal's campus, there's three huge buildings yeah. filled with people who are worried about fraud mm -hmm. and, and dealing with the banks and all, all that fun stuff. Yeah. So we, um, you know, I, I don't myself come from a finance background. We started working in Stripe in uh, 2009, and we launched publicly in 2011. And so, in that in that time in the interim, we were uh, building the financial backends that Stripe now uses, and we have some really great financial partners. Uh, and uh, that way, you know, you can come to, Stripe is one of the only places you can come to, set up an account, and in five minutes be processing payments for your app or website. Very cool. And do you do anything special for mobile u mobile developers that's different than the web developer? Maybe around location or anything? Or I, I don't um, know. So, it, it really depends on the app, right? Because it depends what experience you're going for. Are you going for you know, an entirely mobile experience? Is it linked with uh, a desktop experience? Uh, and so we give people, uh, you know, our philosophy has all, uh, so I, I'm, a, I'm a software engineer at heart. Our philosophy has always been give people really great tools and let them build stuff with it. Uh, and so we give people, you know, uh, Ruby, Python, SDKs, iOS SDKs, uh, and then they will build uh, 
stuff for their app. So exec, for example, you can uh, add payment details online and then create jobs from the mobile app, and then that will just be built to your account later or stuff like this. Oh, very cool. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you think the payments work? Because everybody is trying to get into payments. I mean, you know, I see lots of competition here. What mm -hmm. what do you, Tell me about the playing board that you're playing on. You know, PayPal obviously is there, but who else is there, and, and how do you, how are you going to be different than those other players? I guess. Right. Yeah. And you know, you definitely hear a lot of buzzwords thrown around with uh, with payments. We view Stripe actually uh, as you know not as a mobile payment startup or not as a whatever. We view Stripe as a payments infrastructure and the thing people use to build their their experiences. Uh, and we're competing against you know obviously you have the huge big players who come into payments and, uh, and and have been here for a long time. We're also mostly competing, like I said, with this legacy system of merchant accounts and gateways, and that's what the vast majority of people use today. And to be honest, uh, the real thing we're competing against, or where we see most growth in the future is uh, we're competing against inertia and we're competing against advertising and we're competing against uh, it being too hard to set up payments in your app that you decide you'll just do it later and for now you'll give it away for free. You know, I uh, had a startup before Stripe uh, and uh, we built it and we started you know, having live users and for six months we put off actually accepting money for that product because it was so cumbersome. Interesting. So you're you're going to enable a new kind of micropayments? Is that what you're thinking of? Or uh, micropayments uh, is definitely part of it. Uh, but I mean, I, I know Gumroad was here, and, and you know they want to let you buy things just by clicking on a link, and it automatically you know charges your account a dollar or something. Exactly. Yeah. And this is exactly the kind of thing we enable. This is the kind of I think Gumroad is exactly the kind of thing that wouldn't have been possible back in the day when uh, payment infrastructure was so hard to use and where the barriers to entry were so much higher. Yeah, and do you see Square as a competitor then, or a Square? Interesting, right? I mean, we're we're mostly playing in in different spaces. In that Square are trying to uh, take transactions that traditionally you would have done with cash uh, and make them faster or easier, or make it so that you don't have to. Um, don't have to carry cash, and so you know the taco truck and the coffee shop. We're really interested in those payments where uh, you're not in the same vicinity as the seller, or like it's not even defined where the seller is. Like when you, uh, you know, when you uh, do a Postmates job, uh, you've like someone running around for you, and like where is yeah. the vendor in this? Uh, and specifically, we're really excited by transactions that 20 years ago wouldn't have happened. If you have someone who's based in, you know, Alaska or Utah who's selling to people all over the United States, thanks to the internet. Uh -huh. um, that's really exciting, and that's the kind of thing we want to enable. Uh, and so th that's kind of the difference. We're not doing cash transactions. We're doing uh, transactions that are only possible thanks to what the internet has brought. How does a developer build Stripe? What, what's involved? And how much code? Or what, what do they have to do to, to enable it? Uh, so it's a, a few lines of code, and uh, again, you know, we built our, our lens for building a Stripe was building the product that we wanted at the time. Uh, you know, we joked that uh, we were building startups and accepting payments were hard. We really wanted something like Stripe to exist, so we built Stripe and then go back to what we were doing. Um, and so we have you know, Ruby libraries, Python libraries, Java, any language you might use in, and there's a whole host of, uh, you guys at Rackspace are probably familiar with this, the third party ecosystem yep. where uh, what you don't have time to do, uh, everyone else like, fills in and really plays a part. Uh, and so now it's, it's so mature that it's at the stage, you drop in a like, line of JavaScript into your site, uh, a few lines of, uh, of server-side code, uh, and you are up and running accepting payments. You know, it's really exciting. We see people after dinner, they start working on a, uh, they start working on a project by 1 a.m., they're ready to launch. Uh, and before they go to bed that night, they have paying customers. Uh, and I find that really exciting. That's cool. Uh, what's the coolest thing you've seen, or most interesting thing you've seen done with Stripe? Uh, oh wow, uh, there's a lot of them. There is a uh, there is a cheese shop in Brooklyn that's now sh selling their uh, cheeses all over the United States. Uh, we have uh, Boxy selling their you know their uh, their um, their TV product. Uh, and uh, Foursquare are actually rolling out this suite of merchant tools, and I know this kind of gets into your context, yep. uh, your context stuff. But Foursquare are really going deep on the angle of letting people explore their cities, and so they're trying to they're, they're starting uh, offering paid products there. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming out. Can you tell me just a little bit about your company? How, how was it funded? And how many people are working there? Now? Uh, so yeah, like I said, we were uh, we started working on Stripe in October two thousand nine. And uh, we raised money. Our initial investors were uh, Peter Thiel and Sequoia. 
And uh, we're now uh, 41 people and based in San Francisco. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming out and talking to me about the future of the world. That was great. I really <laughs> it. Money is the world, right? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Cheers. so much.